All right, class, today we're going to look at simple harmonic motion, and in particular, phasors. And we're going to start using these phasors to um, analyze the motion of an object that's going through simple harmonic motion. Um, so in, in the case of a mass on a spring, if we displace it from its equilibrium position, then it will oscillate um, up and down back up again and we can consider this motion as uh, in the form of phases so that's circular motion um, the upwards motion so if we consider the mass starting from here then the displacement will first go up and then back down as it passes through equilibrium back down to its lowest displacement and then back to its original position again so with the with the circle the phaser we would um, use arrows radiating out from the center, pointing to the position which represents the displacement of the mass. So I'm going to have a go at trying to, um, to give you the basics of that. If we start off with the first position for the mass, then we would have a, an arrow that stretches out to the right hand side here and that would indicate the start of the simple harmonic motion. It will move through 90 degrees to be pointing to maximum displacement and the displacement is um, linked to the amplitude so we use A for the amplitude and a is equivalent to the radius in this case, so A is the, the maximum displacement and the amplitude is equivalent to the radius of the circle. So the phaser will move through a certain number of degrees and so if I just consider that the mass has now moved to this position, then the radius hasn't changed but the vertical displacement is represented by this little red line here. So if I draw on a red line, that would be that would represent the vertical displacement of the mass at that time. And we need to know a few things about this. We can look at the angle here. And we'll call that theta. And we know that the, this line here, forming the hypotenuse of a circle, is A, the amplitude. And that is the, the radius of the circle. So we might know that, that value there. And so what we might be interested in working out is what we refer to as Y, and that is the red line. And so if we consider trigonometry, then we would know that if we've got the angle, we want the sine of this angle here then that's equal to the opposite, which is y, divided by the hypotenuse represented by a. And so over here, if I write that down, we've got sine theta is equal to y divided by amplitude. And so we can rearrange that to give us an equation for the displacement at any time. That's the y value. And so y is equal to a sine theta. Now you may remember that uh, theta is equal to, because that's the um, angular displacement, then that's equal to the angular velocity um, times time. And that's just that if, if you consider it in terms of a, a linear equation that you're more familiar with, that came from um, distance equals velocity times time and then we turned that linear equation into this angular equation and so that allows us to substitute in for theta so we get the equation y equals a sine omega t now there's a few things to point out here that um, requires the object to have started at the equilibrium position and so the equilibrium position is represented by this arrow here. And by convention, 
any object undergoing simple harmonic motion when represented on a phasor is considered to go anti-clockwise. Okay. All right, that'll do for now. Um, next up, we will look at turning that displacement into uh, velocity for the object at any particular time.